Let's look at the Dar Sword from Siamese Edge. Hi folks, Matt Easton here, Scholar Gladiator. So I've been very kindly sent this Burmese dart. It's a Burmese style dart, I believe, um, from Siamese Edge in Thailand. And um, this is a beautiful thing. This is actually the second sword that they've sent to me. And this one is a lot more fancy. I would say it has the appearance of being more similar to the antiques as well. It it's, looks more authentic, if you want to use that word. Um, and it's more representative of some of the da or dab as they're sometimes called that we find in Burma. One of the characteristic features of this incidentally is I've talked a lot about cylindrical grips in the past. This one actually has a slightly oval grip, which to me personally <laughs> makes a big, big difference. Now, um, again, the subject of circular grips comes up a lot, uh, a lot and it's not a criticism so much because a lot of traditional ethnographic weapons from around the world, Europe, Asia, Africa, um, North America, all over, come sometimes with cylindrical or round grips. Swords, axes, knives, all sorts. So um, it's difficult to criticize that uh, in a modern replication because obviously with a modern replica you're aiming to make something for the most part that's like the original unless it's a completely modern take on it um, but nevertheless this has a somewhat oval grip which means that the edge alignment is somewhat simpler that being said it's not a, it's not like massively flattened grip. It's not as uh, flattened grip as some people will be used to. So some people might still struggle with the edge alignment on this. I'm, I'm going to cut a couple of bottles and see what happens there. I haven't cut with this yet, but it seems to have a really good edge on it. We'll have a look at that in a second. In terms of the package, what you get here is obviously the sword and the scabbard as a unit. Now, a lot of people in the modern sword buying worlds are used to just buying a sword, but I think it's becoming increasingly normal, even in European replica swords, to get a sword and a scabbard together. And certainly with this type of sword, it's absolutely intrinsic. The two go together. And in fact, this actually locks in. There's no way on earth this is going to fall out because it actually clips. Uh, this part of the guard here actually clips into a sort of collar or um, uh, uh, sort of a locket, I guess we'd call it on a European sword, at the top of the uh, saya, I was going to call it if it was Japanese, but at the top of the scabbard. So they lock in. Um, and I won't say they're watertight, but they're certainly water somewhat resistant which is very useful if you're in a forest for example and in fact i'm in a forest here i live in a forest i'm very lucky to now one of the things i want to mention about this type of sword um, from uh, you find it in cambodia vietnam thailand burma southeast asia and this type of dar goes back to the medieval period so there were swords like this being carried in what was known in europe as the medieval period and they haven't really changed much since then. They seem to have come about in maybe around the 13th, 14th century. We're not really sure exactly which part of Southeast Asia they um, developed in and how they spread. It's a, actually a very interesting topic, which I think someone needs to do more research on. But nevertheless, they are a type of cultural sword that is popular amongst a number of different peoples and cultures in Southeast Asia, most famously probably Thailand, um, Vietnam and uh, Burma. Now, one of the characteristic things about these is the way that they are worn. Now, I'm not going to say they're always worn the same way, but this is a very common way of wearing them. I think the normal way of wearing them. And I am a massive fan of it. So this is an adjustable length thing. You've got loops here you can slide up and down. I've just arbitrarily made it big enough for me to easily get on. And you put one arm and your head through and it ends up being worn there. Now this is absolutely fascinating to me and always has been. I've known about this for years and years and in fact I have made videos about this in the past. This is a method of sword wearing which is not dissimilar to a European baldric but that would normally hang much lower. This is actually something that we find in the ancient world. Um, sometimes you see certain types of Greek sword were possibly worn like this. But in more recent times, the most common examples we find of this are in Southeast Asia and the Sudan. Um, in Africa, obviously two completely disconnected cultures, nothing in common at all, and no like common point of evolution. But they've come to the same conclusion. Now, one of the reasons I find this so interesting is it's so simple and so practical. It's absolutely an awesome way of wearing a sword. And, you know, in movies, for example, we have them on the back so often. And the, uh, the, the argument is that it's, it's so that you can see the actor's face and the sword at the same time. It's because it's more somehow easier to wear for actors. 
All of these things, and probably just media, because at some point someone thought, that's how ninjas wear swords. Is it? No, probably not. Um, but anyway, it just kind of caught on. Um, and everyone copied everyone else. But actually, it's not very practical. There's all sorts of problems with wearing a sword up here to do with going through doorways or under branches that hits things. Um, it's difficult to get long blades out because your arm reaches maximum extension and you can't get the thing out. If you lean forward, it falls out, all this kind of stuff. This, on the other hand, doesn't suffer any of those problems and it's still quite near to the face so if this was in a movie whether this was a medieval sword or a you know, fantasy sword or a, a, a katana and actually if you think about katanas actually worn quite high up in the sash in the obi um, you can still see it and the actor's face so i think it's got a lot going for it and i have to say just to prove that i'm not massively eurocentric all the time this is far more comfortable and practical to wear in everyday use than wearing it at your hip. The problem with wearing a sword at your hip, whether it's vertical or angled or horizontal, is you're constantly bashing things, knocking things, it gets caught between your legs. It's a nuisance. Uh, you bend down and it hits the ground, this kind of stuff. Um, and I know, because I spend a lot of time wearing swords in various contexts, including living history and reenactment. This, on the other hand, doesn't have any of those problems. You could wear a coat or a cloak over it. It doesn't hit the ground. It doesn't hit things above because it's contained within the height of your... Anyway, I'm not going to bang on about it anymore, but I'm a big, big fan of it. And it's super close to your hands. Uh, to easily and quickly access the thing and get the blade out. So it's got all sorts of um, huge advantages. You'll notice then I pulled it out the wrong way around and that was interesting because I'm used to drawing Japanese swords out at the moment and they're edge up. This, however, is edge down. Just to be clear on that, if, in case any of you are thinking, now I think they can be either way around with Southeast, and, uh, Southeast Asian swords, but this is edge down, okay? So as you draw it out, the edge will come out that way. Um, like a European sword usually is, not always, but usually. Right, so um, in terms of the actual sword itself, let's have a little look at it. So I'm a big fan of the scabbard. It's got these um, bands around here. It's got a shape. It's wood made of two halves that are held together purely by these metal bands. That is exactly the same as the antiques that I have owned and handled. This is a sort of uh, bronzy finish, uh, which I quite like. However, being completely honest, it doesn't, it's antiqued, but it doesn't look antique. So as an antique dealer, I wouldn't for a second think that this was an actual antique. And the reason is because the finish on this metal, although it's very nice and much nicer than a, just a fresh metal finish, it looks a bit like the antiqued finish you get on things like table lamps and um, <laughs> garden ornaments and things like that. It looks like a chemically induced artificially induced aging um, so just to be aware of that however i think a lot of people i think it still looks nice it just doesn't exactly look like genuine aging and i have to be you know upfront about that that being said the quality of the manufacturing is lovely if you look at this uh, shape here you can actually see it's got braided wire incorporated into the construction um, and fitted very very closely and flushly to the wood so it's it's really nicely done um, but it has like I say it has a new antiques look to it rather than an antique antique look it doesn't look like a fake antique or at least it wouldn't to me the cord binding uh, in the center there very very nice now if you check the link below incidentally to Siamese Edge I, I, I'm, I'm not going to point you to the, a specific model in fact there's a bunch of different models and there's different grades all the way up to fully custom and then there's like top grade and then there's basic grade. But you can check out that link below and have a look to your, for yourself at the different price points and the different options available. And you can choose different colorings and different styles and this kind of stuff. So this is just one model. I'll also note that in terms of construction, we have a through, uh, I believe, a through tang here that is essentially, I believe, glued into the grip and uh, hilt and this is the traditional construction there is no movement no looseness and everything appears really really well done um, this does have a little pin at the end of the pommel there but i believe that is just holding the uh, sort of pommel cap on i don't believe it's any part of the construction of the sword right okay let's have a look at the actual blade itself i'm just going to put the scabbard down oh, oh just quickly before i do that if you just look in here, you can see that the aperture in the scabbard exactly fits the cross section of the blade. And you've got this overlapping lip, which this blade, or rather the hilt, um, the sort of ferrule up here, sits into. And you can hear it click there. So it's very secure 
and also prevents, to some degree, prevents moisture and stuff getting down inside of there. Um, and in some parts of Southeast Asia, of course, moisture and rain, humidity is a big, big problem. Right, in terms of the blade, so fundamentally, it's a little bit similar. Uh, I mean, it's a typical, there are blade options. Okay, so again, if you check out the link below, you'll see there's different tip shapes, the different blade decorations, different blade profiles you can choose. I think even different cross sections. So there's a whole bunch of options. This is a fairly typical uh, dar, very like lots of antiques that I've had and handled. So a typical shape tip, a typical cross section. But the unusual thing is it does have this very nice uh, incised or engraved um, decoration all the way along there, which marks it out as a little bit, you know, lifts it a bit and makes it a bit more um, high status, I guess, or middle status. Uh, I wouldn't say this is a top status one because top status ones often have like silver and ivory and this kind of stuff, uh, but a kind of middle upper status um, blade. And the shape is very nicely done. Now the edge, it's not a, it doesn't bite, so I can run my fingers on it, but as I can feel it is very, very fine. So I would describe that as a well honed and fine edge and a well polished edge. It's not rough, so it's not from a belt sander. It feels like it's been hand sharpened, actually. The finish on the blade is not quite satin, not quite gloss. It's somewhere between the two. And I actually like that. I think that's a particularly historical finish. I think that some swords are too mirror polished and some of them are too satin polished. I actually like this finish and this looks quite like lots of antique swords from around the world that you find. Now something else that is going to be difficult to show in this light, but this blade does actually have a ham on. It does have edge hardening and under certain light, I don't know if you'll be able to see just up, maybe you can actually, if you can just see exactly like a Japanese uh, katana or wakasashi and nihonto, you can see a wavy ham on line all the way up there. So this does have differential hardening. It's carbon steel, traditionally made, traditionally hand forged, and it, it does have a harder edge than back, which gives you a certain degree of resilience and a harder edge, of course, which would be get better for edge retention and durability. In terms of the spine of the blade, quite similar to many katanas, it has a little ridge at the back there. So it's not rounded, it's not flat. It actually uh, comes to a slight ridge and that's quite traditional and quite typical of the, uh, of Da of Burmese Da. Now in terms of holding in hand, this thing is, is light. I haven't actually weighed it. You can see it on the website there, the weights listed there for the different models, but this is super, super quick and it just goes wherever you want it really, really quickly. For me personally, one of the strange things about it is mostly a European and, should we say, uh, Indian and Japanese sword user. I, get, I realize that's fairly diverse. Um, it has an oval grip, but as I say, because this section up here is quite round and this section down here is quite round and it's not a particularly curved blade and it doesn't have any form of cross guard, I do find it a little bit, I feel a little bit like feeling in the dark for, as far as indexing an edge alignment is concerned. Now that's not a criticism of Siamese Edge's replica here because that's exactly what the originals are like and as you know I've got at least one original in my collection at the moment and I've had others in the past and that's what they're like. They're all like that. Um, so, but just to be aware, if you've never had a, uh, one of these dars or darbs before, that will be something which will feel different in your hand compared to other swords you've held, even Japanese swords. Although these superficially look a little bit like Japanese swords, they actually handle very, very differently and they feel very different in the hand as well. Japanese grips are quite different, suka are quite different and they've got a suba, of course and um, also the blades feel different, the balance and the heft of them feels a bit different. So, um, in terms of sort of durability, I haven't put this through any real tests yet, however, just banging it, it all feels absolutely solid and sound. There's no vibrations, there's nothing, there's nothing moving, there's nothing loose at either end of the hilt, um, and it all appears really well finished and really well made. So I guess, all that leaves us with now is to do a little bit of cutting and then we'll come back at the end and see what my feedback is based on that.
so there you have it as it turns out i had absolutely no problem with edge alignment at all all of those cuts to me seemed super clean they weren't necessarily perfectly straight but that's human error that's me one of them was a little bit curved but they all absolutely gl glided through those bottles my uh, stake that the bottles were on incidentally is a bit wonky and i can't seem to get it straight so things will tend to fall off that rather than stand on it but nevertheless it appears to cut fantastically very very sharp glides through no resistance whatsoever very quick very easy con con uh, to control and very easy to change direction as well and i was very impressed with that upwards cut not impressed with myself but impressed with the sword um, in that it just went straight through with no problem at all and despite the fact that there's no big visible indexing guide for edge alignment just that little bit of ovalness to the grip seems to be enough um, and seems to feel it. And also I was cutting rather than extending out, I don't know if you noticed, but I was cutting with a bit more of an angle, which is more typical with Asian swordsmanship systems. Um, and I think that, is, that helps as well with a bit more of a drawing cut. Um, so overall, extremely impressed, very nicely manufactured, cuts fantastically nothing's like loosened up or anything it's only water bottles at the end of the day maybe in the future i'll do some tougher uh, testing with this on some wood um, or some other tough target but so far stood up really really well super impressed with siamese's edge uh, siamese edges manufacturing and quality and research and faithfulness to the original blade forms as well um, very impressed again so check out that link below thanks again to siamese edge for sending another sword to me um, very grateful be very useful for videos in the future and hopefully i'll get to do some more testing with it at some point maybe some comparative testing different types cutting different types of mediums this versus something else so if you'd like to see the burmese da or Thai bar um, a darb if you want to see this compared against certain other types of sword what can you think of maybe a cookery something else from asia maybe something completely different then post in the comments below what would you like to see this tested on and what would you like to see it tested against or uh, in competition with thanks a lot for watching i hope i'll see you back on the channel really soon cheers folks